Jamie here keeping it coy welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome hope to earn your subscription today um so yeah today's video um gonna be starting the uh the pipe work i literally just got back from uh japan koi imports gone up to uh to see mark um had a bit of a chat as always got some bits and bobs i'll spin you around and show you them in a second um for those of you that know japan koi imports um, the reason why I haven't done any filming the last four or five times I've been up there during this pond build is his shop is currently undergoing a major refit, um, the, the retail section of the uh, of the Koi house. So, uh, yeah, um, go up and see it. Hopefully when it's finished, uh, Mark will let me do some uh, some video in to show you guys how amazing it looks. Um, it's looking pretty good. He's almost there. It's all fiberglass, um, just the plumbing in, I think, that he's got left to do now. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'll spin you around and uh, show you what we're up to. Well, the fryer's still looking good. Flick the light on so you can see them. Boing! Yeah, got some lovely lemon hair wackies coming through now. Some Matsubas. Quite a few Ochibas still in there. A couple of Jinrin. All looking good. Sorry about the glare. It's a nice sunny day today, which we'll go outside and have a look at some pipe work shortly. But yeah, I've just been, as I say, to Japan Koi Imports. I've got another length of um, two inch, three meters. Uh, got all the rest of me uh, pipe sections that I need. So I've got some more rubbers. Um, a black waste tea, which I'll, uh, I'll explain what that's for later. And one of the last expensive things um, that I needed, I've now got. So uh, that's the one I've gone for. Um, as I was explaining to you in my last video, um, they're just so economical to run. And uh, when they say they do what they say they do on these they're they're pretty accurate whereas uh other pumps um not gonna name names but we all know who we're talking about they say that they should be running on one watt and they're running on a completely different watt they tell you what flow rate they should be giving and they're giving nowhere near that whereas uh, the tests mark has done on this one they're actually really accurate uh just over 17 and fifty liters an hour, I think, or seventeen thousand five hundred, something like that. Um, where they claim obviously eighteen thousand, and the other very pumps claim twenty thousand and don't even hit seventeen thousand. So, and these guys, this, this filter can get to seventeen thousand uh, with a lot less wattage than uh, than what the uh, very flow can. So that's why I've gone for that. Obviously, as you all saw. Uh, Daz from Skeggy Koi Pond has brought that down for me. So I've got that. I've got the bits to connect that to the two inch pipe. Obviously, I've still got all my valves. I've got them two there. They were from Japan Koi Imports as well. And then uh, I got all these ones off uh, a fellow uh, Koi Keeper hobbyist from um, the Koi group that I'm on on uh, Discord. Uh, four of them. So. Uh, I have one either side of the UV, so I can take the UV off if I ever need to. I'm going to have one either side of the pump as well. And then I've actually got another two spare uh, in there if I need them anywhere along the lines. Um, so yeah, get in there, get in there. Right, let's, uh, let's go outside and have a look out there. And I also forgot to mention, I picked up another... Um, little pot he has like uh, measuring pots you can either get a small pot a large pot or you can buy it by the bucket load um, but a small pot is 500 grams um, of food so i've bought another another pot of that because again as you guys saw in my last couple of videos the uh, the mix that i've got in there it's still mainly uh japan koi imports food in there but because there is still some of the uh the older cop and stuff in there it does depending on what comes out in the scoop one day it could be crystal clear the next day it could be a bit cloudy 
because I've put more coppins in than I have uh, Japan Koi imports. So, uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, get a bit more Japan Koi imports food because it seems to be doing uh, really well on these fish. And uh, look, actually, while, while we're back at the, uh, the tank here, some of these plain white ones, like this fella here, uh, that I just thought were going to be plain white and boring, the one here at the backlet, it's got some sumi coming through. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, have to wait and see on them. Might be a Shiro or a Beko. Might turn into something completely different. But uh, that's the first one of the plain white ones to actually get any proper black coming through. Obviously, this fella down here has got a black dot on his head. But that's always been there since he was uh, tiny. He does look like he's lost loads of scales off his back. But that's how he was when he arrived as a one inch fry. So I don't know whether that's just part of him or whether he lost them before he got here. But other than that, he's a fighting fit, healthy fish and not a single deformity other than that. So uh, yeah, we'll keep our eye on him and see what happens to him. Maybe they'll grow back, maybe they won't. Maybe they were never there in the first place. Maybe he was born like that, who knows? But yeah, it's still got my uh, Ultra Civ 3 up for sale, um, if anybody wants it, let me know, drop a message in the comment. These fishies are doing really, really well. Getting massive, I do need to clean the windows again, now that the sun's out. So yeah, they are humongous in there now. The fry are doing really well as well. Them, uh, six fry that I got from the uh, the Bolden Reefer, they were about four or five inches when I picked them up. They're now pushing seven, I would say, inches. So they've grown really, really well. Now that, as always, what you doing? Sniff, sniff, sniff. So, uh, yeah, these guys are doing really well as well. See there, me Kahaku, the Tancho, Mitsuri, Jim Mitsuba, Benikiki Kuryu, and whatever the other one is in there. There's one in there again that I don't know what it is, but uh, when I start netting them out and giving you guys a closer look at them, I'm sure someone will tell me what it is. But uh, yeah, so. Got tidy up in here today so we can uh, start some pipe work get the pump connected to the uh, the filter work out where I'm gonna put the UV if it will even fit in there and still be able to get the lid uh, off this um, and then maybe start looking at a roof for it return lines are gonna be easy to do because once the UV and the pump is all plumbed in um, I'm literally flexi hosing it uh, back to the pond for now um, I've got some adapters that go into the pressure pipe and whatnot that will then attach to the flexi hose which will then return and as you've all seen uh, down here basically for those of you that haven't seen my uh, previous videos that's my in pond return um, it's got a flexi hose adapter on it ready to go and uh, yeah that's a one and a half inch flexi hose there but uh, the flexi hose I've got over there is two inch so uh, again I'm only doing that because I had it and because funds have been tight and I'm sick of building this pond now it's taken far too long and I want to get it ready I've also got um, an idea what to do for the waste um, as well so I uh, get that sorted hopefully today um, Right, let's get a cracker lacking. I'll catch you back in a bizzle. So this is as far as I've got so far. That is a bit bit of a weird way of doing it, but that now uh, connects the, uh, into the pump basically. So that's all now glued up round and the pump does fit down there. Obviously it's sitting a bit wonky at the minute because it's uh, only supported by the, uh, the rubber boot. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to go 90 down here, then 90 over there, 
and then 90 it that way because that's 390 so I've just kind of sloped it down so now I've only got two 90s and yes it does mean if I need to get to the back wall I have to step over it but pff, it's only what foot and a half off the ground so that's that's no problem um, so I've got me ball valve right on this side because it didn't fit down there and if I didn't put it there obviously the the pump needed to be on this back wall which if then you know it it was very going to be very difficult to fit it in down there even if I'd extended the pipe and then got this to touch the wall like I have because of the uh, the attachment there there just wasn't enough room to stick it at the back there next to the pump so I've put it here but obviously the pumps on a union anyway so uh, I can just isolate it there take that out and then there'll just be a bit of runoff of water um, from that pipe but meh that's all right I can always just take it off from here if I have to unscrew that union but then again there'll still be water stuck in that pipe so either way but that's how I've done it so far I haven't yet got the UV up on the wall because of the way I want to plumb this in I want two returns obviously from from the one pump um, and my plan was initially to put a T down here through there and then straight out of the wall over there unfortunately that isn't going to be possible so I'm going to have to run it up and put the T along here but I need to make sure obviously I've still got enough room to get the lid off of there and because of where the shelf is and where the UV's got to go and then the unions that's going to be on that it's all a very very tight fit so uh, yeah I've got to uh, do some extra measuring and working out on this it's uh, not not ever done built many a ponds before but never worked with uh, pressure pipe and bottom drains and all that malarkey so uh, yeah it's a bit bit beyond me at the minute and uh, I'm working it out so uh, if any of you lovely uh, guys out there watching this video lives anywhere near Peterborough and is extremely good with pipe work give me a call <laughs> um, on this side this is what I've done with the waist so again got me a straight boot there because it's one of the best fitting ones for these uh, Awazi drum filters. I mean, they're great filters, but the uh, the fittings on a previous video, uh, one of the comments I got, someone said they're push fittings. Why, why anyone would have a push fitting on a drum that everything's going to come out of the floor, generally on pressure pipe, 99% of the time? Um, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's why they're, all the boots are so loose. But as you can see, I've got some black waste coming out of there comes through the wall and then I've got a 90 on there and you might be thinking why on earth have you done that Jamie well when I went down to Japan Koi Imports last as I said to you earlier Mark was uh, just refitting his uh, showroom and this is what he'd come up with his one though was obviously right next to the drum that was my initial plan but because I've put the skimmer line again at an angle to save on extra 90s um, couldn't couldn't go straight down down there so I've brought it out of the wall but the reason being I've got a cap that can go on there so I've then got access to my waist I'm going to put a 90 straight on here from the uh, that's a two inch rubber reducer 90 on there and then send it wherever I need to send it but if for whatever reason you know if big leaves or whatever have gotten into the drum and get stuck on that two inch uh, reducer I've now got access I can get my hand in there and that way up to the drum as well look so I've got access to clear out any rubbish or crap that I need to and then pop that back on there jobs are good so uh, yeah great idea Mark and thank you for sharing it with me because that will uh, help work a treat so yeah I'm gonna 90 off this and then take it round the back somewhere I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna take it behind the filter house and run it to the garden or my neighbour did say kindly that I can attach into their downpipe there um, which means I'd need to run it along the edge of the fence drill a little hole in the last panel of the fence there and attach it into that downpipe if I want to go that route but uh, yeah so that's where I'm up to with that so I've not got much further um, as I say, I've just got to work out how I can get that up to the, uh, as I say, I think if I move the shelf out of the way, 
I might be okay. Um, because I, what I want to do is I want a 90 off before the UV, if it was after the UV, and so the, the UV pipe's going to come obviously down this side of the filter, and then I could have put a T there, 90 straight underneath it, both pipes through the wall, job done. But I don't want to run all the water uh, through the, well I suppose I could do, I don't know. Um, I want to be pulling around 15,000 litres because I'm getting uh, quite a big shower. And yeah, I'm getting quite a big shower. I've been recommended that that wants to be run on about 10,000 litres an hour, um, give or take. And then my return be down there. Um, obviously, that's going to want a good sort of four or five thousand litres an hour coming out of that so in the summer obviously I'm going to be running around 15,000 litres I know the pond is only just over 10,000 it's a, with all the filtration and pipe work going to be around 10,300 to 10,400 because the pond itself is 10,258 uh, obviously minus a, say an inch for the off the water level so bit less than that say 10,200 I don't know say um, and then obviously the, the filter holds I think I don't know what it holds I'll have to uh, look it up anyway I'll stop waffling but yeah you get my point I'm gonna gonna be running in the summer around 15,000 litres now I don't know if 15,000 litres an hour is gonna be too quick going through the UV so my initial thought um, was to run the UV line from the uh, the bottom return in there because that's only going to be pushing in the summer it will be pushing around five to six thousand litres an hour depending on how good the pump works um, because the rest will be going over the shower and then in the winter if it gets too cold obviously I can turn off the shower because it will be uh, there'll be a ball valve on that uh, line and then all the water will be going through the UV and it's a two inch return so I, you know I can turn that that up to whatever speed um, I want it to be basically and obviously in the winter you don't need as much UV as you do in the summer anyway but what do you guys think it, I mean it, the, the uh, UV I've got you've seen in the last video 55 watt uh, Evo Aqua on the box it says um, up to 20,000 litres an hour can be pushed through it so it can cope but is between 15 and 18,000 litres an hour too much for it or would five, between 5 and 6,000 be better um, if anyone can answer that question let me know be muchly muchly appreciated um, but yeah that's, what I'm, that's where I'm up to at the minute um, if anyone can, can help me with that or pop over and help me with some pipe work muchly appreciated i'll catch you in right guys well thanks for uh watching a, another video um please like and subscribe um obviously you've seen where i'm up to with uh, the pipe work so i'm getting there just now got to work out what i'm doing with the uh the uv and the t um but i'm sure i'll come up with some as i say if, if there is anybody out there near peterborough that knows a bit more about the old uh, pipe work give me a shout um, give me a hand give me some advice anything you like um, so yeah thanks for that and a massive thank you again to all my subscribers and um, without you there would be no point in doing this channel um, and in regards to the YouTube community thank you again for all your support you've been uh, you've been absolutely great so uh, I'll say goodbye and we'll catch you all on the next one